is all up. You can't bring them down because she's on me to mom. I need to run around. She says, there's beauty in the air. Check in the sky, so that she's happy as I know. It keeps me alive. Hello, everybody. Um, start with one of my favorite songs that I just most recently been. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take some time and wait for some people to come in, and uh, then we'll get started. I have a whole wonderful list for you guys that I'm gonna talk about today. And now I can go find them all, and for some reason it just disappeared. Loved it. Oh, the wonders and the joys of working with this wonderful thing we call technology. It's great when it works. It's even wonderful when it doesn't sometimes. Yeah, I'm singing along. Sorry about that. What do you guys think about the background? That's what, something else I want to know while I'm just waiting for people to come in. I have a whole lot of stuff set up at 8 o'clock to go live, so once that happens, you just have to sit here and listen to me sing. <laughs> I hope everybody's been having a good week. I look forward to this Tuesday all the time, even if no one shows up, which I think is also okay. I started changing my hair, so I'm like real happy about how this turned out, truthfully. I did not think I would look very good in it. It was just sort of more of a compromise thing. So. It's weird. doing pretty well for me, though. Doing pretty well for me. Now, the reason why I like this song is because it's all about someone who has to wander. And yes, Mr. Soul Patch is joining me today. So, that's the end of that song, and that's where we're going to go ahead and start. So what is wanderlust? So the Oxford Dictionary describes it as a strong desire to travel. With the use of the word beginning in the early 20th century from Germany. Merriam-Webster has an even better definition of wanderlust and that's a strong longing or impulse toward wandering. So I love this definition because it brings into the equation the definite physical pull towards wandering away through the world that I feel. So Miriam Webster also puts the first uses of the word in the 1875 and also from Germany. And while I was looking at the definition, I found a site with other words that helps define what goes on in a mind like mine. So my favorite one is also German. <laughs> they seem to have a knack for finding words that help you describe things that you feel. So here it is, and it's called Fernway. And the definition of Fernway is an ache for distant places, the craving for travel. So this one mixed with the Merriam-Webster definition, I think is the best way to describe what it means when I say, the wanderlust has me and I can't wait to get out of here. Because <laughs> that's basically what it is. So there are many places I want to go just because I haven't been, not because there's anything particularly to do there or because it's particularly beautiful 
or any of those other places. I just want to go because I haven't been there. What about you? Have you found in yourself that you look down the road and feel you can just keep going? Are you okay with leaving everything behind for adventure? Do you want to see a place no matter how glamorous or developed? Maybe even if it's maybe even it is better if it's just a forest. Then you too may be struck with Fernway or Wanderlust. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I couldn't find a good pronunciation guide. <laughs> how does this affect us? Well, like I've said before, I have to do it or I get real grumpy. <laughs> So you could compare it to the same drive you feel to eat or sleep. You could compare it to the same drive that you have to create or bond. It's just one more driving factor in my life that determines how I live it. So because of this, I'm not interested in fancy living spaces, just ones that move with me. Um, I'm not interested in having lots of things, like uh, a lot of people, they, they buy knickknacks for their house or they buy new just pictures of uh, random. I don't want those things. Not interested in it. But I am interested in things that help me get down the road, like a well-maintained vehicle and something to sleep in while I move from place to place. So we've talked about the introvert cave before and how we will leave. This will give us the best chance of seeing the length and breadth of this country we love so much. Excuse me. We both want to see places across the pond, but seeing the amazing landscape of our home is just the beginning. Or it's where we want to start, basically. So this is just the beginning of our travel life, and we are so happy you are with us as we settle our wanderlust. So what do you guys think? I see Brendan has joined me. Hello, Brendan. And I see Earl has joined me. Hi. What do you guys think? Do you ever get touched or do you ever get a little bit antsy where you are and you just want to go? I have just riding down the road, buying groceries, looked down the road and said, I could just keep going. <laughs> Brendan does a wonderfully amazing job of keeping me grounded. I think without him, I would just keep going. And I would pop up at people's homes that I know who live other places, and that's just how I would live. I, it is so hard for me to say or to describe this sometimes because I remember being very young and just wanting a little cottage in the woods, one of those, if you've ever seen them, they're, they're these Irish cottages. And basically an Irish cottage is one room. And you build it with stone and you make it with your own hands. And in order for a man to marry, he had to build a cottage. So I would, I always wanted something like that. It's, it's built out of the stone, it's painted, it has a thatch roof, and all of them have a fireplace. So when I thought of home, when I thought of this, the, like the sentiments of hearth and home, it was always a fireplace, it was always stone, and it was always something you built with your own hands. So a lot of that has translated from my younger years whenever I just wanted a little place to have a husband and raise like 12 bajillion children <laughs> to what I want to do now with the cargo trailer that we have unceremoniously dubbed the introvert cave. Hello George! And this one... So where was I going with that? Okay, sorry. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> and so when we're building the introvert cave, it has a lot of the same features for me where we're building it ourselves, and I'll have, it'll be me and my husband. Now, I won't have a bajillion children. I don't even have one, but the fact is that it's ours and we will build it together and it will be our little Irish cottage going down the road, which is just perfect for me. I'm not someone who needs a lot. I'm not someone who really wants a lot. Like I, when I imagine that, um, 
I'm going to go down the road. It's me and Brendan and my dog and our little Irish cabin on wheels, and then we just go. All right. Earl says, I've never found that kind of escapism never interesting personally. There are a lot of places I want to go, but I don't think I would feel comfortable unless literally my house was in order. <laughs> I need foundation first. And Earl, I completely understand that. It's like I said, this is a, these are all new sensations for me. Didn't even happen until I was 30. It really kicked me in the butt, I think at about 31. I'm 34 now, so I'm three years into understanding what I need to do. So with the wanderlust, it really just drives you. It drives you to just drop everything and go. Hiking trips. Yes, George, hiking trips are amazing. I love doing those. Uh, they do help with the wanderlust as well because you can just continue to walk. Um, but back to Earl's point where you're talking about foundation. Uh, a lot of pe That is how a lot of people are. That, that's perfectly normal and okay. Like... Uh, before this wanderlust hit me, that's exactly how I was. Like, I just wanted a little Irish cottage that my husband had built. You know you know what I'm saying? I just wanted a little Irish cottage where we could live and we could decide how to live our lives and we could just have our family or not or what have you there. And we just lived our lives out there and died there and all this other stuff. Like, moving and going places and needing to at the same level as like I'm hungry or the same level as like um, how, do I, how did I say this earlier like I'm hungry or or I, I have this desire to to sleep or what it's it's right up there with those same desires now so that's why I think there are words for it and I also think that's why the words are in such a way as like with Miriam Webster said with it where it's more than just a strong desire to travel because it's an ache and a craving for it, right? So not a whole lot of people have that, but, um, and that's okay. A lot of people need the foundation first, just like you said. Brendan is just like you. Brendan, and that's why I say he he's a lot of it. Um, a lot of what Brendan does for me is keep me, uh, keep me uh, grounded. So that is, um, something that I need in my life otherwise I'll, I will just I'll drop everything and everyone and I'll leave so <clears throat> he is my foundation in many ways it's Jesus and Brendan and uh, some other family members but basically that's it like otherwise I just don't see the point staying here <laughs> so um, but before that, Brendan and I basically had the same idea of having that foundation. And Brendan's the same way. He doesn't mind traveling. He doesn't mind going places. But he needs to have a home to come back to. And so Earl says, is Brendan going to build your house? That would definitely be a great foundation of love. <laughs> no, he's not going to build me a house, <laughs> unfortunately. Our little Irish cottage on wheels that we're going to that we're going to design and kind of build together is the introvert cave. So I am really, really looking forward to that. I can't wait for us to do that. Yeah. So that's about it for this one. It is, it is something that you can't deny once it, once it hits you. Uh, like I, I've told this story before. And if you know me in person, which most of you guys do, um, you've heard the story or you were part of it where I just, had to leave. Brendan came home from work and I looked at him and said, get in the car, we're going somewhere. He asked me where and I said, I didn't care. Get in the car, we're leaving. <laughs> so, it hits you, excuse me, at a point where you can't handle it anymore. Excuse me, goodness, why do I always burp when I do this? <laughs> You can't handle it anymore. You just have to leave. And so that does affect you as far as like, uh, I've never wanted a job where I I wanted where I was the manager because I could not just leave. I've never wanted a job where I was instrumental to the, to the place because I want to be able to leave. Like I want to be able to, if I decide to say, I'm not going to show up today, to just call them and be like, hey, guess what? I quit. And it not interfere 
hardcore with people's businesses. You know what I'm saying? Like I understand that whenever you go to work for a business, if, if you're going to be a manager, then they want you to be become kind of part of the culture of that business. They want you to stay with them for years and years. They want you to do that thing. And so because I know myself, I'm not going to stay at a business for years and years and years. I, I can't do it. Uh, even with the sort of the travel business, like a lot of people have said, well, why don't you get a business traveling? Or why don't you travel working for the business? Usually you have to be a higher up manager, a manager that's way up there in order to travel and do that kind of stuff. So it just sort of depends. Um, I have heard more and more nowadays where things like the last company I worked for was Arby's. And if you wanted to move around to different stores and that's how you wanted to work, they were okay with that. Just whoever needed you, whatever store you wanted to work at, whoever needed you, you could go work there for your five hours or whatever it was and then stick around there. I have thought about doing that just because they're so much more flexible. But Brendan would have to retire. Things like, like different things would have to change in order for uh, it to work. So it does affect your, you know, how you make money, not how much money you make. Let's be clear about that because you can always make more, but it does affect how you do it. So like I said, we've got a plan basically for him to retire pretty soon. And then once that happens, everything's going to change. We're going to do things differently is my hope. So we'll see, but this wanderlust thing for me is more than just sort of a, an aesthetic or whatever. It is in my brain at a certain point in time. It is time to go somewhere. Uh, and then once I do, I, I'm relaxed. I can, I can do it. I can handle everything else. But I gotta get out of Dodge for a little while. <laughs> and so until I do that, I can't relax. I can't, I can't just chill. It has to be time to go. So I hope that helped you guys understand Wanderlust a little bit. I, I love that there's <laughs> that all of these things are German words just because for some reason Germany's been on my mind a whole lot lately. And uh, I think it's so interesting that Germans seem to have a good grasp on emotional verbiage or words that, that show you like emotional uh, how you feel about things. So in the comments, I'll put the links that I use to come up with this. Uh, until next time, guys, thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're all here. Thank you, Earl and George and Brendan. And I will see you later. Bye.